All right, let's get into some of the history of the diagnosis. In 1943, Leo Kanner published his famous paper on disturbances of effective contact. 1950, 1970, they were blaming mothers for causing autism, which is absolute rubbish. Okay, we go a little bit more. 1952, autism was listed in the DSM with schizophrenia. And in 1968, they kind of mentioned autism. And things didn't get really formalized until 1980 in the DSM-3. You might wonder, what does DSM stand for? Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. I don't know how the statistics got in there. I really don't know. <laughs> um, and to be on the spectrum in 1980, you had to have speech delay. And, and then, then they also um, you know, put autism under you know, pervasive de de developmental disorders. You had to have speech delay. Now what's happened is a lot of kids that used to be labeled MR, mentally retarded, now got over into autism. See, people tend to go where the services are. And I get asked, has autism really increased? Well, I think on the mild end of the spectrum, you know, the real mild kind of kids, they've always been there. I can think of kids I went to college with that um, would be Asperger's, you know, mild autism with no speech delay today. Because 1987, they um, put autistic disorder in there and then added PDD on OS, pervasive, pervasive developmental disorder, not otherwise specified. So that broadens it a little bit. Then in 1994, it was possible to get on the autism spectrum without having speech delay. And that was Asperger's, you know, where you have the social awkwardness, fixated interests, repetitive behaviors, but there's no obvious speech delay. So that really broadened the spectrum. Now, in 2013, I've taken out Asperger's and they're going to make everything uh, all autism spectrum. No PDD-NOS. And now what's that going to do with diagnosis?